Welcome. This is a technical explanation of how planes fly. Engines and wings displace air downwards to generate lift. Planes achieve buoyancy and fly when the air mass displaced down each second equals the plane's mass. In stable flight, wings with a positive angle of attack displace air downwards and slightly forwards to create a downward force and thus generate enough equal and opposite upward force for the plane to fly. In this example, a Harrier flies through 2,500 kilograms of air each second and accelerates this air downwards at a velocity of 4 meters per second. This creates the downward force that can displace 10,000 kilograms of air downwards each second. In this example, a 10,000 kilogram plane will displace 10,000 kilograms of air downwards each second to achieve buoyancy and fly. It's that simple. Note that this force required for lift is about 10% of the maximum thrust that is available from a Harrier's engine. So, a Harrier could easily generate the force required to achieve buoyancy and fly. So what? Buoyancy provides a significantly better understanding of a new insight into flight. According to Archimedes' principle of buoyancy, all forces, weights, and masses are in balance. Note, gravity is not directly included in the calculation of buoyancy. The same principles of physics apply to helicopters and balloons, which fly by displacing air downwards. Strangely, this is not what is taught at physics or engineering schools. This is the same equation used to calculate the thrust or force created by a rocket. Here, the force equals the mass of the exhaust gases displaced downwards each second times their velocity. Both equations are based on a force being created by pushing gases downwards. To put it another way, in a vertical climb, engine thrust is generating all the lift. Here, the force equals the mass of the exhaust gases displaced downwards each second times their velocity. This is the same equation used by a rocket. As the plane's angle of climb decreases, then the wings generate an increasing proportion of the lift. The key point is that lift generation shifts from the engines pushing gases down in a vertical climb to the wings pushing air downwards in horizontal flight. But the equation for lift remains the same. Note that exhaust gases consists mostly of water vapor and carbon dioxide, whereas air consists mostly of nitrogen and oxygen. All these are common gases.
The argument for buoyancy is supported by research in a well-known aviation book, Understanding Flight. The authors claim that the lift of a wing is proportional to the amount of air diverted down. So how much air is accelerated down? We did the calculation for a 250-ton airplane at 35,000 feet, and it's diverting about its own weight per second to, to keep in the air. It's a lot of air. In summary, the physics of lift can be explained by Newton's laws of motion. Aeroplanes fly when enough air is displaced down and buoyancy is achieved. This is consistent with all aspects of flight and what is observed in reality, including the laws of physics. How birds, insects and helicopters fly and boats and balloons float. Buoyancy is consistent with lift being due to how much air is caught by the wings and the vertical velocity downwards that air is accelerated to. All flight maneuvers and slow flight Ground effect. Gliders using air currents to gain altitude. Wind affects the amount of air displaced by the wings. At higher altitudes, the air is less dense and thus generates less lift. Lift relies on the smooth flow of air over the wings. So any turbulence that disrupts laminar airflow will reduce the amount of air displaced down and thus also reduce the lift generated which can then cause the plane to stall. A stall is relatively dramatic and abrupt, similar to a boat sinking. The plane is no longer displacing sufficient air mass to remain afloat. Wing design and aircraft momentum impacts the amount of air displaced down and the lift generated. For example, heavier and faster jets have greater momentum and therefore they are able to accelerate air downwards more aggressively with their deeper wings. This generates more lift overall, despite their short wingspans. Flaps increase the distance down that air is displaced, the amount of air displaced, and the lift generated. How the different engine positions on the wings affect lift and flight is consistent with buoyancy. Airflow will naturally follow a curved surface due to the coander effect. This helps to explain how the top side of the wing can redirect the upper airflow downwards. That's it! In summary, 
all aspects of flight are consistent with lift being due to planes displacing air downwards to fly. In conclusion, this solves the 100-year-old debate in aviation for how planes fly. So what? A better understanding of flying means that pilots make better decisions and crash less. Also, this will allow for more efficient wing designs. In addition, this updates Archimedes' 2,000-year-old principle of buoyancy to include time. Thanks for listening. 